It's still not going though. Hello? I'm still, oh, there we go. Boom. Wait, still tell, not going though. Who, whose Hello? computer is talking right now? I'm still, oh, oh there it's we go. Matt's. Yeah. Oh. Matt, I need to mute. <laughs> okay. I can still hear myself. Wait, you know, no, no. Oh, computer is talking right now. I need to mute. I can still hear myself. No. I can I can plug into something. Hey y'all, so um, just let us know uh, if you're in chat, if you need us to turn the volume up or down. Are or, you turning it? Or it's on now. It's yeah, on now. yeah. Um, the mixers look happy, but you know, everyone has different preferences. So just cool. give us a heads up. Volume up for sure from Don's Labyrinth. Okay, so let me up it a bit more and Oh, it smells like rotten cabbage. Yeah, yeah. There's like a waft that comes up. Um, mm. Bueno, great, thank you. Volume uh, on Twitch. What did they say? Yep. Oh, so I'm supposed to like check on this thing, right? Sounding, sounding, sounding good, good now. now. Yeah. Cool. All right. Should we uh, start? Yeah, I think we can get started. Um, yeah, so, so you need to change the scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there thanks for joining us. I'm Jonathan. Hi, I'm Mike. 
That's my. We are at the beautiful space that is the new home of Woodbine. Uh, if you have been to this space, uh, we are moved to this another road called Woodward, which is just around the, around the corner from where we used to have be. But um, this is a beautiful space right now. Um, we're waiting for the COVID to stop or getting uh, calmed down so y'all can come visit us. Yeah, and if, um, just for people who uh, are unsure like what Woodbine is or what they do, do you have like a one or two sentence? Um, I don't. Okay. Like uh, That's fine. Uh, a center for uh, community autonomy. So, which is tied to our topic today is to build our digital autonomy uh, by building our own internet, uh, by harnessing our own, the power of the internet in the hand of the community. Yeah, that's a good description. So with that, um, we'll jump right into our slides, which I'll pull up here. Um, so I'm gonna, well, sneak the camera into the corner. Um, yeah, and and feel free to give us feedback the entire time. Uh, we're streaming. Uh, talk about Gypsy too. Yeah, so we're streaming in three places right now. We're on YouTube, we're on Twitch, and we're we also have like um, kind of a, a more video chat room on uh, Jitsi, which I actually need to update the. Code yeah, don't to, go to <laughs> so don't go to this one. It's meet.jit.c slash woodbine. Woodbine mesh. Uh, woodbine mesh. Thank you. So um, near the end, we'll have a Q and A, and if you want to just use your voice instead of typing out, then you can just join us on here. Um, in addition, we have like a shared notepad that you can go to, where you can just like ask more questions, or Did if I someone. Uh, if someone wants to help with transcription, that would be super appreciated. Um, if you like doing that, no, you know, no pressure. It's just nice to have. Um, but yeah, to my uh, topic of digital autonomy, um, today we're here to learn about the hows and why to make internets. Um, so. Uh, yesterday, we, Bife and I just like chatted about what our personal goals for the, this workshop or talk would be. Um, and kind of the four that came out of that is uh, first to share what we did to connect Woodbine to um, NYC Mesh or the Mesh, um, to make it clear that the internet is more about people than technology. We both have strong technology backgrounds, but um, and we're happy to get into the nitty gritty, but uh, really if you're trying to understand some of the things that you rely on, um, it starts with people. Uh, another point is that the internet is extremely physical. Um, it's made of wires and buildings and power lines and- Servers and servers and servers. So many loud, noisy servers. Um, and, uh, what we think is also important is that you could leave here feeling empowered that you could create your own internet, whatever that means for you. At, at the very least, know like where to go to ask questions. Um, so the quick rundown is going to be about 20 minutes of us uh, blabbing at you for what is the internet and why you would make your own. And then we'll get into, and that's going to be like kind of higher level. Um, as long as I don't get too in the weeds. And then afterwards, Mife's going to talk about how um, we connected Woodbine to NYC Mesh, which is the largest community run um, internet provider uh, in the tri-state area, probably in like the Northeast. Um, and also uh, maybe a bit about other networks like uh, the ad hoc networks that was built for Standing Rock, or built at Standing Rock. And then we'll have about 30 minutes for discussion, so there'll be lots of directions we can go in, and, and we're happy to chat about, and it'll just be kind of directed by y'all. So if that sounds good to you, um, 
Oh, cool. Let yeah. me preface it by saying I am still suffering from the second dose of the vaccine, so apologize if I'm still low energy, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever I can. Yeah, no worries. Um, so what is the internet? It's a lot of things. Um, it's an agreement on how computers can talk to each other. Uh, it's physical. It's literally a massive ball of wires that snake across almost any place a human has traveled. So, um, yeah, there's like transatlantic cables, which are really cool to look at, where you have to like, sharks might bite through them, and then you have to send someone who knows how to like scuba dive to repair weld underwater. Um, very simply put, you know, it's been a windy week in New York. Some trees have like knocked down network cables and power cables. Um, so it's a physical thing. Um, and if you're really interested, uh, I don't know if I have it here. Give me like two seconds. While he's looking for, a uh, for, for the book, I have to, I'm going to keep talking about the physical nature of it. Um, we had a, a storm a few days ago in New York City area. Not storm, just like crazy wind. And um, that's the reason we actually don't have the mesh properly set up right now because of the, the pole on the roof actually fell down. And uh, we are going to remount it maybe today, maybe tomorrow when this rain finishes. That's how physical it is. Um, so I don't have it with me. Uh, but there's this pretty sweet book. Oh, you want me to find it? Yeah, um, called The Networks of New York. Uh, it's a field guide. If you don't know, a field guide is usually used to like walk around like nature and identify plants or mushrooms or birds or whatever. Um, so Ingrid Burrington made this sweet field guide that fits in your back pocket and gets lost easily. And it teaches you how to look around New York City and identify pieces of network infrastructure and like what the symbols mean and, and how they're used. So um, that's a super fun thing to do. Um, back to the slides. Uh, there's like an old Far Side cartoon where a place where no one knows you're a dog, it's tongue in cheek, but it is a place where people can find their identity or work with different identities. Um, there is some places you can be pseudonymous. Um, sometimes it's a utility that frustrates us going into the subway when all of our apps stop, stop working for some reason. Um, it's also a place where some larger companies have figured out how to turn human rage into advertising dollars. Uh, there are lots of different ways of thinking about the internet and share your own ways in chat. Um, Okay, but like that doesn't tell us what, what is it really. So let's go back to like agreements between computers talking to each other. Um, any two computers that can talk to each other, and this can be your phone or laptop or servers, that forms a network. Um, you know, so usually it's your phone talking to a cell tower or like someone's Wi Fi. And then it lets you see your friend's latest photos somehow through the internet, hand wavy magic. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper and talk about what it, what it is really again. Um, so a network is when any two devices can talk to each other. And the internet is made up of all these small networks that have agreements to connect to each other. So it's like interconnected networks it's kind of an early term for it. Um, when we say we're on the internet, that just means that like our device can travel to the places we want to go. Um, usually, like, I mean, it's a lot of social media networks. Um, and this is about as deep technically as I'm gonna get, at least in this section. Um, Taeyun Choi has done some amazing. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Taeyun Choi has done some amazing uh, workshops oh, okay. involving other ways of exploring what a network is. Um, so, 
the distributed web of trust talks about centralization and decent or uh, centralized, distributed, and peer-to-peer -peer networks. Um, there are lots of like physical uh, enactments that you can do to kind of solidify your understanding of what the internet is. Um, it's such a bunch of wires. We're jumbled together inside. Sometimes we find we pull this wire in one way, and then somewhere, someone like twenty person down the line would get triggered and receive this message. Um, and and I I think this is like an important thing to kind of pay attention to a little bit. Um, but if we're imagining three people uh, who want to talk and they each have just like one phone that's directly connected to the other phone. So we have person A and B with one really long phone line between them two and person B and C with another um, long phone line. You know, A can talk to B and B can talk to C. But if A wants to talk to C, they have to, they have to ask B to share their message. And this is, kind of the crux of why understanding how this infrastructure is built, understanding how you could make it your own um, matters. Because there are many different people and players. It's not just A, B, and C. It's actually like A, uh, you know, you wanting to talk to your friend C. And then like there's like 50 other intermediaries between you and them. And those intermediaries may not have your best interests or may not have the most robust uptime or um, simply are just inscrutable to you. And, and it's kind of like, OK, I'm using this thing every day, but I don't really know how it works. Um, so yeah, that's the core of it. Uh, you can think of, like, if you know the tech, I mean, B is just a router, um, but we'll get into that later. And then super short, I'm erasing a ton of history here, but it is, it is really important to understand like how we got here. And, and quite simply, um, the internet that we use today was funded by DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Association or something. Um, basically, uh, military budget, US military budget funded the creation of the internet today to help create robust communication network for times of war. Um, so they funded it. And the main development of the internet, which was called ARPANET beforehand, was done by uh, like a dozen or so universities in the United States, mainly Berkeley, MIT, um, Ames I'm calling out as like for a lot of interesting reason, but that's a, a university in Honolulu who without whom we would not have any like, well, this version of the internet. Hmm. Um, there's tons of other internets that have existed and there's a few that still do exist. France had a really cool one that was tied to a very specific hardware that was like more advanced than ARPANET. Um, and there's a ton of uncredited people behind it all, but we're, we're going to move on from that. The reason I'm just bringing it up is this could be like a rich discussion topic later if you are interested in learning more about how the people who started this had like incredibly, incredible biases and how that has become an assumption of how things work today. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Mike. Oh, that was for me, no? I mean, I can continue okay. and then refer whichever you'd prefer. Yeah, it's if fine. You're not, it's, okay. it's fine, too. No, yeah, 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 totally. I thought I come here as, like, sort of, like, I come here for, like, Expert. a talk show sort of thing. So I thought we are just going to chat and, you know. Mm. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, but I still would like to chat with you and uh, trying to get answers from... All of you guys who are watching, uh, I'm monitoring it. So once again, like we have, we do have that QR code um, that goes to a question and answer board that you are welcome to join. And uh, we also have a, a Jitsi. Uh, 
which is like a self-hosted Zoom uh, thing that you can join us at meet.jit.si slash woodbine mesh. I think uh, someone already put uh, a description in uh, YouTube and Twitch, so go find them. Yeah. Um, so so let's pick up mesh in the wild. So um, what we have is like uh, there's a bunch of people who start building um, their uh, infrastructure start to redefining what internet is because y you see earlier when Jonathan was talking about it, right? It, the internet itself is actually not a centralized system. That's really surprised to me when I learned about this. It's like internet at the beginning is a bunch of small quote unquote peers. Even like today, uh, we are still. Um, Using this this protocol called BGP, we we're talking when we talk to when like these uh, internet providers talking to each other, they're still consider each other as peers. So there's no such a thing as like a centralized system that direct people's uh, packets, direct people's information across board. It's um, so. So basically, mesh for mesh, in in a way, we're kind of hoping is to um, bring this back to the people, bring this like original idea of the internet that is the distributed network sort of thing back to you know the int uh, the the our each and every individuals, so that we like you know our our relation to the internet is like you have your your ISP, maybe Verizon uh, or maybe Comcast, um, they will take our in information and they send it to certain uh, uh, services like Twitch, like YouTube, like Facebook. Um, so, but anyway, back to, back to these examples. Uh, I'm going to talk about NYC Mesh most of the time because that's what we just did in at Woodbine we successfully connect Woodbine with the NYC Mesh that's why we, we're having this uh, workshop right now but there are other examples for example um, there's a successful net called People's Mesh in Oakland um, originated from the pseudo room um, and I think they have like an area network in Oakland and uh, I slightly participated in the ad hoc uh, internet provider in Standing Rock. Um, it was an interesting uh, experience, especially I, I heard there are people who are interested in like rural, especially rural internet. Oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> Sorry, somebody just talked on Jitsi, so I had to like, back up a little bit. Um, uh, so Standing Rock was, was an interesting example. Uh, there was no infrastructure. We're on uh, Native American land. Uh, the nearest uh, uh, access is about 25 miles away. And then we used the gears we're about to show you guys. Uh, similar stuff. Uh, they're on situated on top of two buttes where like 10 miles apart from each other and shoot this uh, beam of information from the casino to the camps. Yeah, so we have a few pictures of like, not from Standing Rock, but, but kind of of this hardware mounted up um, on the roof as it was a, a little while ago. This is, oh. Next. No, 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 that one, it's fine. Back uh, to that. Which one? Yeah. The slides. Oh, slides, Thank okay, you. yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, uh, there are other things uh, that I think Luandro made. Great. Uh, it was, <laughs> some, some, some one, one person we, we met uh, uh, on this uh, distributed social network called uh, uh, Scuttlebutt, and then he, this is another example of rural network. Um, please message us after 
or like join our Jitsi after to talk about this later. Yeah. And uh, we don't have to do this right now. Okay. Wi-Fi is a one of the largest mesh network in the world. It's basically uh, operated by like church steeples in Spain um, to provide rural internet. And and that was started by like one frustrated farmer, mm -hmm. right? Who like knew a little bit, was just trying to get internet on, on their farm and couldn't and said, screw this, I'm gonna make my own. And then it, it became one of the largest network providers, period, yeah. like in, and in Spain. Yeah. Uh, Freifunk is a German, uh, not rural, but it's like a more urban sort of uh, mesh net, similar to OSI mesh, but their frustration come from uh, Ger German, Germany has the re this really weird uh, law. They, they uh, actually uh, prosecute uh, the internet provider, say if you are in a cafe and doing some illegal stuff on the internet using their Wi-Fi, they actually, the, the cafe owner actually got in trouble. So they did this thing called Freifunk to kind of circumvent that thing. But yeah, that, these are just some examples. Uh, and we can and they're all different about. reasons for starting up, right? So mm -hmm. that's like an important thing of, you know, it's, it's important to know like why you want to do this. Um, just think about like your situation and what motivates you. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, so before we talk about mesh, we have to talk about like different type of like uh, system design. There are centralized and the quote unquote decentralized, which could be federated or distributed. The centralized thing is, for example, Facebook, you or YouTube or Twitch. We are on them, those massive uh, infrastructure providers where you use their cloud, quote unquote, and then um, everything like you. Uh, I know my friend Mitch sitting right next to me right now, but he's watching the stream from a Facebook, uh, or sorry, from a uh, YouTube uh, instant. Twitch? All Twitch right, Twitch. <laughs> from a Twitch thing, and then it the the information goes from my computer to this Twitch thing from like thousands of miles away, maybe, and then come back to him, which is sitting like right just right next to me, and then the distributed network will be like as if like we are. Uh, so in the middle, there there's also uh, federated, which is like. Uh, I think example would be like Mastodon and or like email emails yeah uh, everyone has the, like back in the day when nobody's using like gmails and then every every corporation or university has their own email server and then they those email servers are peers they are equal to each other and then we're just subscribing to them because it's so difficult for us to run email server on our own and then there's distributed um, for example, uh, the Scuttlebutt we just uh, discussed very briefly earlier, it was just like a social network where your computer is your server. So that's kind of like a tech woohoo-y thing, but it actually works quite well. And then I would say um, er earlier we said internet itself is sort of like distributed or federated. Um, so, what as NYC Mesh, we're trying to, like, as a node in the sea of, or galaxy of the internet, we want to be a peer in the internet. And then from there on, we provide internet to everyone. But on our everyone sort of like, uh, level we can also peer with each other which is the beauty of it yeah can you go it's, to that peering website yeah um. so this is the NYC mesh peering website um, so you go to NYC mesh.net slash peering you can see this our peering policy is yes and uh, we are peering with these bunch of internet peers including Apple Google 
a bunch of things you've never heard of, but they're very essential part of the internet infrastructure. Yeah. So, so what what these peering agreements represent, you know, are are people who work for these different companies and like run network centers, agreeing to share and send forward like internet traffic, right? We said it was like many different networks. So like Apple has a network, Google has a network, Akamai has a network, uh, Digi Desert has a <laughs> network. Um, Although we know it's the one person network. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's operated by one person. Like to, to the point, like there are some things you'll, some names you'll recognize, but, but you can as a single person operate your own um, network. And the agreements, um, they're, they're pretty lightweight. It's like, hey, we'll send over traffic from your place to our place and vice versa, you know, as long as it doesn't like set our machines on fire for some reason, you know? Like it's, it's like just as much, you know, humans handshaking as the computers physically like wired together. Um, and I think one of like our goals is is to make you think, okay, I could like peer, or or this could be something mm -hmm. I'd like to do. Yeah. Um, so it's not in the hands of other people. Even if it's not you, one person, you can create a community. Yeah. Um, next slide. Um, so yeah, a little bit of background of our. Uh, NYC Mesh history, we were actually one of the f early adopters of Mesh. We signed up uh, f probably five years ago, I don't really remember, but our note number is 254 and right now it's like over 10,000 perhaps. Um, I can go to the map. Yeah, you can go to the map. And um, uh, the problem was that, you know, the Mesh itself is like quote unquote network effect, right? Like the more people next to you, the more ability you have to be able to connect to other people and then connect to, to this whole mesh network. So we are, we just moved, before we were moving, I, I did a lot of testing about like, maybe connect to this, connect to that. And uh, it was quite difficult. That was, that was the old, actually, old picture from, from oh. the rooftop. Okay. I'm glad you brought it up actually. So so right now we're actually so after we moved we did another testing. It's supposed to connect to this one right here, uh, which is like a few blocks away, Cyprus. And um, but there was some building in between and then we eventually found out we have a way to connect to uh, this massive node called Saratoga Village. Uh, directly um, that has more than a hundred node connect to it. It's a NYCHA tower. Um, it's great because it's just like one single tower in the, uh, there's no uh, higher infrastructure next to it. Um, so yeah, if you look at this, this is an example. This particular screen, when I clicked on Saratoga and we see all the people connecting to Saratoga, all the red nodes like red to Saratoga is centralized or star topology. But the important part is that anyone, if you see these other blue nodes, those are, are nodes that are connecting other people. So a red node might connect to a blue one, which might connect to a blue node one. And this can only happen in like uh, a setup where peering is easy or where like you have a mesh or peer-to-peer -peer network. But if you were to like take this and, you know, get all the maps of every single node on the internet connected to every single other node, and there are internet maps that are more physically oriented, um, that kind of goes back to the early ARPANET diagrams, which are just like, okay, you've got these like hubs with a bunch of things connected, and then between them, you have these peers. So um, just like there's not a huge difference between like 
NYC mesh as like a mini internet that is connected to the internet. Let's show you show us some pictures about the install. Yeah, the install. Here's Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Uh, he's trying to install this thing, and so so the blue dots, the blue dots represent this like piece of hardware, which um, I can hold up. Oh, we're doing that. Yeah. So this is uh, can be used in two different ways. It can be used to connect to another hub, or it can be used for for like other people to connect to you. The good part about this thing is that it's uh, it's a 360 degree sort of um, uh, device, so it can emit a signal from all directions. So if you are within our area, within like say three block of range of uh, wood buying, you are able to receive our signal from and, this thing. And this is not like, you don't need a license to like buy this hardware, right? Like this oh, is. Oh yeah, it's all commercial. Yeah. It's all, it's all like we're all, we're all able to like access the, all of these. All the stuff that we are using in NYC Mesh are commercially available. Yeah. So yeah, you can do the same thing. Um, I'll kind of go We're quickly installing, through. Found the rod. Okay, so maybe this is a good thing. So we have two type of devices. We have this, it's called a, a light beam. It's a, from this company called Ubiquity. And then we have the other thing, the, the big um, um, vertical thing is called Omnitic from a company called Microtic. So these are pretty much like the stuff that we're using for most of the NYC mesh gears uh, to build up this uh, network. And then, so yeah, if you are interested in starting your own mesh in your rural community or in your uh, urban community, I would say, yeah, start from these. Um, they are not in any ways like open source where but they're like tried and true, uh, just, you know, uh, networking gears that all the network guys use. And then we had very good um, experience with them. So the difference is that um, the light beam are, this is like a very directional antenna, as you can see the shape of it. It bounces things to a direction. Um, it can go up to maybe like few, I don't even know the range, maybe a few miles, up to 10 miles even. Yeah. In, seriously, when we're talking about like in Standing Rock, we're, we're using something that's even like one level smaller than this, and we're able to like do that 25 mile connection. But that's a special case because there's just absolutely no interference over there. But here in New York City, the problem is that there's so much interference. So your range is kind of like lower or shorter, but still it, it, it's doable. And the Omnitic is, it, it's more of a mesh gear because this needs to set up, you need to peer with one to the other. And for th this type of thing you do, you can just use them as peers, one to one. I'd say if your neighbor has one, and then you can just install one directly received, uh, receive uh, uh, internet from your neighbor. Um, yeah, do you want to continue? Yeah, or? sure. Okay. Um, Whoa. <laughs> this, is, this is an old slide. Um, yeah, so this was more like me. I, so I don't know how. I don't know the actual story of how NYC Mesh got started, so I just I, made I up. I honestly don't know if anybody in NYC Mesh at this point knows how NYC Mesh started because you went through so many generations. But the I idea is the same, like, you know, a bunch of people got fed up and then they're like, we want to build our own mesh network. Actually, I talked to my, my bike guy the other day and then mm -hmm. he was like, Yo, we did this thing in in early nineties. Uh, there's like there's a tower, you know, like these things called oh yeah, this thing called internet exchange. Mm. Uh, in New York, we have internet exchange, 
uh, those are very important infrastructure in in the internet topology. So so since since the eighties or nineties, people have been doing things like this. They rent as a peer or rent a server space in that in that topology in that um, internet exchange, and then you go up to their roof, and then they they uh, use one of those antennas to emit power, send information to somewhere else. And uh, what we are doing right now is just like we're trying to build a network on top of this. So it's not just like one person can use this, but like the whole community are able to use it. Yeah. So if, if you're like thinking about joining the mesh or creating your own, like the first step is just, you know, getting your home or apartment or wherever you spend your time um, connected to some other peer but then kind of the next step of participation is then resharing that connection to more people, therefore strengthening the network. Um, so it's really important to be able to reshare. Um, and uh, on top of that, the question is like, what can Mesh do, or what can Mesh do other than providing internet? Uh, yeah. That I think to me that's a really interesting uh, question. Uh, first of all, like we we do connect people to the internet. The NYC Mesh actually, <laughs> we were trained to say that, NYC Mesh is not an ISP. We are an internet peer, so we are like one layer above ISPs. So we are just a peer in the distributed network that is the internet. Uh, the difference is different from us and the other thing, other peers is that we provide the internet to other people. Yeah. to the community not not to other so businesses <laughs> in terms of like the battle on like against work for net neutrality for example we can provide you very 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 neutral internet that's just pure internet coming out straight from the pipe <laughs> without being filtered yeah in any form of ways yeah it's it's um it's a really rare thing to get these days like there's there's a agreement like when you connect to the mesh that you'll basically be a nice person on on the network it's like written in humane language i think it's called the network commons agreement or something like that and and like it's the least legalese most like common sense you know hey if you're peering with us like we're not gonna like or if you're connecting to us um yeah, what happens if Saratoga goes down? We, so we're almost at, at the end of the slides. We'll get to questions soon, but thank you for asking a, uh, about what happens if Saratoga goes down. Um, so yeah, like we, we don't um, discriminate. I don't even know like how we handle like DMC takedowns because we don't have... Oh, uh, we got an uh, email. Yeah, we got like an email once for DMC ta takedown, um, but... Oh, we have to publish it to our, our members, there's a DMCA takedown, so you shouldn't do the things they don't let you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, like, that's for sure. Like, uh, like sure. we're, in, but it's, it's kind of like the uh, reason why Free Funk started, right? Like they, we are not responsible for what you do, but you should be nice on our network, please. Yeah. That's about the extent so of like it. So it's like a network that you don't want to do the things that will involve the rest of the network. But, uh, but to to bring other uh, peers in the network trouble. Yeah, but Use like a VPN. the 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 idea of like okay, why would I make another internet? Like maybe you have like okay internet at home, or you want to share it with other people, um, because if you if you create the infrastructure, or if you at least have visibility into how things are connected, you can do things that are not really supported by or possible on existing networks like um you can create just kind of like it's the same reason you participate in any community that is local um or it's one of the same reasons you participate in local communities is because the the stuff you want to do just doesn't make sense to be published to the world it doesn't make sense for you to like publish to all of Twitter 
like an interesting yeah. find, like a, an interesting stoop find, right? People building, use it because it's what they have. Yeah, building like a building a relation with the neighborhood grandma. The neighborhood grandma will cook you some food, and you'll be like, okay, thank you so much. You know that sort of uh, experience that's very so human. You know, we try to harness that way, but with you know technology with that so yeah like so it, there's some like mesh services that people actually host on on the mesh itself um that you know like there's next cloud which is like building your own cloud and then there were like people sh like uh, once in a while people share their own movies their music but you know we're not sharing it to the rest of the internet we're sharing it internally yeah. So that's okay, and then we we all have also like these uh, distributed network nodes such such as uh, IPFS, DAT, Scuttlebutt. Um, there are some presence in there as well. Yeah, it 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 allows you also to like if you are able to own the infrastructure or software, um, or at least know the people who are operating it, uh, you can try out different rule sets, right? So Mastodon's pretty good at this, where like uh, different, you know, Twitter's not going to, it, it took them how many years to be able to implement some safety controls around blocking or around harassment, and they're still like way behind where they should be. Um, if you're yeah. running like your own software yeah. You the burden of that kind of moderation is on the members, but the members are closer. Like the people are closer, so the behavior you like keep that shared culture, and you can like expand upon it and like, you know, yeah. serve your own needs if yeah. other places aren't serving it for One you. One more example is that I had we, we the reason we didn't want to do this on Zoom today was like I was talking to Jonathan. Hey, can we try to like. <laughs> run this on our, 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 our own infrastructure because we have a Jitsi server that's built for, uh, like, that's hosted inside of the mesh. So can we actually just use that to, you know, instead of Zoom so that, you know, that sort of thing, uh, we can actually, what's that called? Dog food? Is Dog that, food, yeah. Yeah, it was like some stupid programmer term that you actually got to use the stuff you're building. But th th there are some limitations. The server is not stable right now, maybe, and uh, uh, it can only host m less than thirty people. Yeah. And then after, like anything more than that, it becomes a lot more unstable. But but in that, many you cases, can just use uh, yeah. YouTube. But for many cases, for many cases, that that's enough. Most of the yeah. time, I'm not having a You want to talk to your mom. You want to talk people. to anyone. Yeah. You know why? Why? Why do you want to do like the Zoom thing where like your your traffic is routed through China or something, mm. where you can actually just do like a community way to like do a community hosted uh, solution. Yeah, it also just helps like visualize creatively what what things might um, might not there are things you might take for default or for sorry for granted of like how things are on the internet and when you start to like run your own software or talk with people that do it you can find out um, that that's just some decisions someone made someone else made and those decisions might not serve yeah. you we are building this up a little bit. If you can see behind me, there's uh, there's like we did like a little mesh board uh, to the to the left side of you. There's like this stuff we're trying to illustrate what's going on on the on the rooftop. We have a light beam that points to Saratoga, the giant tower we talked about. And uh, on the right side, there's like a thing called the quote unquote server. We 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 need to set it up, but uh, it's a Raspberry Pi. But we can put movies, we can put Next Cloud, we can put a lot of things on theirs, and then we can serve it to anyone else who's connected with the mesh. Yeah. So so th this is a combination of like the actual hardware that's in the room right now that is connected to NYC Mesh. So that router. The power, the POE are all connected. Yeah, the, the, the cardboard cutout, that is, all the like paper stuff is stuff that's not, you know, just physically here, but does exist. So light beam on the roof is connected to Saratoga and, and those connections are what we like call 
at least the physical part of MIC mesh. And then uh, it's a little hard to read, but on the left of Saratoga, it says the internet. Um, and for what most people uh, at home are thinking of, like they've got you know some phone, it's connected to Wi-Fi. That Wi-Fi is being broadcast by the router. Um, the server is what we were talking about with like running your own software. You could run it from your phone or you could run it from like a laptop, but generally you expect it to be up all the time. So that's why you like plug in a server and you just give it that name. Um, we're, we're kind of pretty, we don't have a ton of time for Q and A. Um, do we, we can do Q and A on Jitsi too. Yeah. Well, no, what I'm saying is like, we should sp speed up these yeah, slides sure, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Um, we can talk about like how to start your own mesh and we've got some slides for that so we can get into it. We can talk about why you might want to do this. Um, this is something that like, if you came here, sharing your motivation for coming to this workshop would is awesome. Please do that in the chats. Tell us like why you, you are interested in the mesh because we know why we are interested, but we're kind of deep in it right now. So um, it's good to hear, you know, just why you're, why you're interested. One thing we didn't talk about with Sandy and Red Hook was that um, uh, peer to peer and, and uh, distributed networks are by its nature more robust than centralized. Um, so there's a really good question. Uh, is Saratoga in the New York Exchange? We'll get to that. Um, Does this uh, stream actually cut off at, at 8? Oh, sorry, I haven't. No, the stream doesn't cut off at 8. OK, um, so if you uh, want to stay um, after and then want to hear the qu answer to your question, please come to the Jitsi. Yeah, we'll share the link for the Jitsi and all the chats yeah. one more time. And then Hi, uh, strange person. And then we can start. Stranger, no strange person. Um, we'll we'll answer the right. earlier chat questions first, and then uh, yeah. people yeah. who are physically in Jitsi. Yeah, but the camera is kind of zoomed in a weird way right now for some reason. I don't know. Um, I just unzoomed it. It's probably delayed. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a um, right now. Start running some software, self-hosting software. Yeah. So, so we can just go back to the. Yeah. Essentially, we just yeah. want to inspire you to do this, to build your own infrastructure uh, that, you know, be, that will eventually become a part of the internet uh, to harness the power of the technology and the internet. Don't get, be afraid of it, but don't be overtaken by them, and, but like build this for your community. So if we are, in our talk, by any means, we actually uh, inspire you to do that. We'll feel really happy today. Yeah. So with that, um, thanks for joining us. Also, Thank feel you. free to just sign off if you want to go or whatever. But um, I think the first first question that I saw was like that I remember seeing was what happens if um, Saratoga gets down. Uh, yes. The first question is from. Dom's Labyrinth from a Twitch stream. What happens if Saratoga goes down? Will this affect the entire mesh network? Uh, I would say yes, it will affect, but it won't affect that much. And has it happened before? It happened multiple, multiple, multiple times. I can't even count. So, um, so sometimes, yes, like because there are like hundreds of, of uh, nodes, or maybe even 500, uh, maybe even up to 1,000 people actually connected to this one node, um, we have some congestion issues from time to time. And uh, we have, uh, um, there's also like, it's a very poor dilapidated NYCHA building. If you actually have been to a NYCHA building, um, the power actually went off a few times. Um, but that's one beauty about the mesh is that there, there are more than one way to connect it to the internet. So it, it's, a, it's a network. So if Saratoga went down, your traffic will be rerouted uh, to other people, other node. Uh, so everyone supposedly have, should be able to connect it to more than one, but sometimes, a lot of times, they're only connected to one, unfortunately. 
Um, but um, most people will be able to redirect to another node uh, in, uh, automatically if Saratoga went down. Although your speed will take a hit, for example. And uh, right now in, in NYC Mesh, uh, the future of NYC Mesh, we are building some more, we're actually trying to partner more with NYCHA, A, to provide people who, who are like direly in need of internet, free internet. Uh, B, is that there are some like, uh, there are really good infrastructures, like big towers where we connect it to. So we have another node that's coming up that's situated between Saratoga and uh, Lower Manhattan in this building called Vernon, and uh, it should be taking off any time at this point. Um, another question that I saw early was about the development of yeah um, the development of other kinds of internets. So um, I alluded to like France's. Uh, like online service, um, it was called a Videotex online service. Uh, it was built on top of these Minitel special mini TV telephone hybrid computer things. Um, it was a precursor to the World Wide Web. We are mixing terms, um, the internet and the World Wide Web. World Wide Web is generally when you open a web browser and you type in a address and hit enter. Um, the internet encompasses more than that. It encompasses all the other ways that computers can talk to one another. And uh, the Minitel is kind of this like interesting service where a lot of, um, a lot of like now I guess retro futuristic hardware is, but, but also had like um, message boards, had uh, ways to like buy stuff through the phone, um, dating services, games, a lot of interesting artwork. So um, I do a lot of like digital archaeology on the side. So this is a particular interest to me. Um, but yeah, the Wikipedia has a bunch more. Um, what other questions did we? I... Uh, Mr. Nice Guy says, curious how you get your mesh connect to the greater internet. Uh, we connect to the internet directly, right? We said oh, we, we do this through through the um, uh, the peering network. Um, so if you don't have access to this peering network, uh, you can still get connected to the greater internet as long as one of you guys have internet access. Yeah. So so uh, this is one of the cooler parts of the uh, the internet field guide um, networks of New York um, like it it gives you a list of buildings that are important for internet infrastructure and it, it is in some of these buildings like 375 Pearl Street where physically the wires are going in um, to the greater internet um, yeah, there's so so there are like different ways to think about how you're connected. There's this like OSI model that talks about you know how wires are supposed to be like um, like literally wired up. Um, how and then like one level above that, you know how you're supposed to tell a computer, hey, this message isn't for you; it's for someone down the line. And, and it, it gets like more and more complicated, but um, at each of these levels, you know, we are talking with another person or a group mm -hmm. or a business, and we kind of sit down and make an agreement. And sometimes money exchanges hands um, just because like, you know, in, on some buildings we pay rent for the physical antennas to be installed. Um, actually, that might be a problem if you're like, like landlord is super greedy or whatever they might be like oh verizon yeah. you know told me they yeah. give me a hundred bucks a month to put a cell phone oh tower up there so you better you know a thousand you, you better give me a thousand for this <laughs> uh mesh um there are laws to protect you in new york if uh 
if you are installing MYC mesh um, on a non-shared space like an antenna, yeah. you you have rights to. But at the end but, of the day, it's not a te technological issue. It's yeah. it's a human issue, yeah. and that's what makes us interesting. Okay, next question, uh, real quick before we do we we might. So let's just do all the questions and then we yeah. can like hang out and see afterwards. Yeah. Uh, Bad Juju seven eight one. What kind of impact does weather have on the NYC mesh network? Does service drop during storm? Oh my gosh! Does service drop during storm? Right here is um, what happened a few days ago uh, when the storm uh, hit our roof. And um, we're still fixing it right now. Mitch is right next to us. He's, he said he's going to go fix it, right, Mitch? That's right. <laughs> yeah, so I would say... Uh, like, it, yeah, it, go ahead. Okay, I want to say, like, oh, I actually, I tried to find this picture. Like, I, there's one day, um, I actually, there was, like, a snowstorm. I had to go to one of the mesh nodes to actually dug some wire out of the snow. So, yeah, it does happen. It, it does affect, and then we actually... Do use some gear that is not the gear that we see. It doesn't matter. Uh, that we show you today. Um, those are like running on higher frequencies, and the higher frequency has more susceptibility to particles like storms. And uh, these things will affect uh, the mesh, and then the mesh will. But the mesh has m more than one way out, right? So, so it will rebalance itself afterwards. Although you might experience slower network, but so far it's been okay. People kind of tolerate it, I would say. I mean, some people it's their only means of connecting to the internet, besides like maybe through their cell provider, which could be prohibitively expensive. Um, just, just like a, a small side note, um, you know. A lot of people like to shit on Comcast and Verizon and all these other internet companies, and for good reasons. Um, they're greedy. They do not serve equity equitably to everyone. They only go where the most profits are, and they break a bunch of laws. And they're all sorts of. This is me speaking as a person, not as a spokesperson of NYC Mesh. However, the people on the ground, when you do lose internet, when you get these text messages that there's a storm in your area, we're preparing for it. It's because they have to send people out into the cold who have to go and like physically fix things and um you know you should like appreciate that uh that's what's needed just to keep this stuff running and that it's you know it's some poor engineer or like technician's job to like go up and do this um this is all community like NYC mesh is all, all done by the community but um you know, it's not like free labor. I don't know how to describe it. Mm. Just like appreciate that yeah. someone had to fix your internet. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, next one. 12, Shouting Lager from YouTube says, 12 years of NYC Mesh and you have just 600 nodes up. How many users does the Mesh support currently? Uh, I don't know, actually, how many people, a thousand or 2,000, something to that ballpark. Uh, the 12 years is, first of all, uh, I, I, I honestly have to say, the NYC Mesh is also not a centralized system. NYC Mesh is a collection of smaller meshes. That's w how we imagine ourselves to be. So to us, it's like community Im is important. Once we get connected to our local community, then our local community member will join. So some of the metrics is important, such as like how many people are joining us. Of course, we, we wish everyone to join us. Um, the, but sometimes uh, we need the whole village to, you know, we, we need a community to, to, to come together and say, oh, okay, that's it. We actually all want to join together. Because to us, actually, on the technical uh, perspective, to connect to one person takes about the same of effort as connecting to the entire building or yeah. the block. Yeah, so it's a, a big part of it is outreach and just like getting your the people in your building to like share, um, which is, is kind of an interesting like uh, an interesting problem. You may only be serving one apartment even though you could be serving the whole building. Um, 
Uh, another thing is that, uh, to be pretty frank, we've gotten better about this in, in the last couple of years, but, but certainly early on, um, this mostly only attracted like people like me and Mike, who yeah. already knew hipsters, te technical, tech workers. technical reasons why we wanted to make our own internet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for many, many years, no one did anything, any kind of like outreach. It was just like some buddies getting, getting to the bar and saying, huh, who, who else do we want to hook up to, you know, this week. So, um, it, it's certainly like one under, I don't want to say underdeveloped. This is just like the natural state of how things are, you know? Um, there's no like rhyme or reason. There's certainly demand in places like, like for example, NYCHA buildings. NYCHA buildings is a good one. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of a timeline of when nodes get connected. If you're interested in like, there's also events that happen which get a ton of signups for us, where like a net neutrality news story drops, and then like we get a wave of signups, and then just like a trickle in. So. You know, um, if you have ideas to make it yeah. more, that's cool. We 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 have not accepted like like reoccurring corporate funding or anything like that to like, yeah, it's interesting. Well, other it questions? Is, yeah. Uh, eight twelve. We're twelve minutes after we're supposed to end. Uh, but one last question from Ursula Nowiska. Um, says, I'm just one block from Woodbine location. Do I need to install anything on my roof to be connected to mesh network and use the internet? The answer is yes, but also come to hang out with us. We're one block away from you. <laughs> so yeah, use the community, you know, uh, and then we can help you to install. So like that. yeah, just, just to give you one, like uh, how to get started. Yes, come and meet the people and, and like talk to us. Um, request. Like first put your name on the map, just get your like, like there's a node request. Um, the NYC mesh docs page is really awesome. Like a lot of the more nitty gritty questions of like what things look like are here. But, but it's basically put in a new node request, join the Slack group and continue to ask that question. And eventually like, you know, we'll pick, find a weekend where it's good to go up on the roof to like aim the antennas um, as far as hardware goes, you're likely to just want to get, um, he, here's a good image of, uh, up, he, up here you see like the light beam antenna. Oh, it's, really it's cool. good to have a, um, like a pole connected to it. Um, generally people just like drape the wire down to their window and use that as their connection. Um, and you don't need like a modem, you do need a router, um, you do need power, and then yeah, you connect to your, you know, your laptop and your phone, and I guess the plants could connect to Wi-Fi if it wanted to. Um, and we can help you kind of navigate like installs, and we have people that do volunteer installs, and we have people that um, kind of use it as a way to make a little extra money, so they'll do like a little bit more professional installs. Um, but yeah, I mean, step one. So yeah, so this, this like image up here is the typical, hey, I just want internet through NYC Mesh. We have a suggested donation, but it's really just like, let's get you connected. Um, and then the next step is like resharing that connection where you would maybe introduce that second antenna that we were talking about, the OmniTick. Um, but yeah, just like reach out. Um, I'm fine to go and answer people's questions for another 15 minutes before I would want to have some dinner. But we can just do that on meet the, meet the GC. We have five people here already. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll scan Twitch just to make sure we didn't skip over some... Um, do do do. We did how to connect. We did its automatic. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us here at the new beautiful home of Goodbye um, and on the internet on, on Mesh of the world. Uh, so if we, hopefully, um, the only the one takeout from, from us we, we hope you get 
is that you will be inspired to build your own internet from um, from the get-go, be it rural or urban, or try out, you know, hosting your own services and harness the power of the internet. Yeah, so now we can uh, go to the Jitsi and uh, answer people's questions there. Um, I guess we should close the the stream. stream. Okay, so I'm going to close the YouTube and Twitch streams. Um, If your question didn't get answered, just like send us a message or just join the Jitsi. Um, Cool. Thanks. Peace. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to stop broadcasting, so if you're on Jitsi, this is just going to be you want to show me your face before that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you.